Hey everybody, hope you guys are all things safe. So I am back in Hong Kong right now where I will be here for a week. But today's video is on the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. So I'm gonna take this phone out with me all day. My SIM card is in here. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I'm just gonna go, you know, do one of my day in the life kind of vlogs. And I'm also gonna carry the Motorola Razr Plus, the 2023 edition with me, just so I can have a comparison between these two flip phones. Okay, I'm gonna step out now at 12.51 and the battery life's at 74%. It's nice to have such a large screen so you can see all your information. And uh, let's check the weather because it's pretty hot outside, I'm pretty sure. It is 29 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you're watching 4K 30 footage right now with the main camera. Of course, I can turn on the outside screen too, so I'm filming the video while getting a clear preview of what I'm filming for when I film these uh, front-facing camera vlogs. So this screen measures 3.2 inches. It's a little bit smaller than the Razer's 3.6 inch screen, but the overall dimensions are very, very similar because the screen measurements measure diagonally. Okay, it is indeed pretty hot, but uh, good thing I have this uh, Samsung Galaxy flip fan that Samsung gave media in Seoul. Woo. In camera with both phones right now. You can switch out to the ultra wide, I think. Actually, no, you cannot switch out to the ultra wide with the razors. Okay, so one clear win for the Samsung is that it can switch out to the ultra wide mid filming, while the razor cannot switch to the ultra wide in between. Okay, so I've sat down at a coffee shop. Wow, here yeah, I'm here waiting for my coffee. Let's go over the specs really quick. So like I said, the Flip 5 has a 3.2 inch outside screen compared to the Razer's 3.6 inch outside screen. Flip open the phone, the Razer's also a little bit bigger, 6.9 inches to 6.7 inches here. But it's not just height difference. In fact, you see the height's very similar. The Razer screen's actually a little bit wider than the flip screen by like this much. It actually makes a difference when you're typing because I two hand type a lot and I can type faster on the Razer than on the flip. This is slightly narrower than a conventional slap phone. I believe it's 21 by nine aspect ratio. While well, this is 20 by nine, so it's much closer to a normal phone, but not a huge difference. I can get used to typing on this keyboard perfectly fine. In terms of processor, the Flip 5 wins because it's powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. While well, this phone only gets a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, so it's a one-year-old chip here compared to the newest chip here. Despite that, they're both the exact same price at $1,000. Samsung also wins in the hinge. It's just a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more firm all around. It's, it's like the stiffest hinge of any foldable phone right now. It stays in place at any angle and it snaps open with a reassuring snap. The Razer hinge is not bad per se. It's definitely an improvement over previous years. It can also stay in place, but it's a little bit more wobbly compared to Samsung's hinge. In terms of cameras, neither of these phones have that impressive hardware. On the Flip 5, you have a 12 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the inside. Overall, I find the Flip 4's cameras to be satisfactory. And I do think Samsung's processing is a little bit better than Motorola's, at least when it comes to dynamic range. Ah, so good. Yeah, good beer. I've been watching selfie camera footage with both phones right now. On a Google Plus. I just have the phone sitting in flex mode on top of the platform. So unfortunately, the Flip 5 does not have a zoom lens, so any zoom is digital. So now you're watching digital zoom at 3.8 times zoom. Maximum zoom is 10 times. Okay, I just got off the bus. I am in the Yunlong district of Hong Kong. I come to this area a lot um, when I lived here. This is basically kind of on the edge of Hong Kong. It's very close to China, actually. It's our Hong Kong city center, basically. Okay, so this is one of my favorite places to go to. It's a Taiwan bao with like cilantro and pork belly and they have different variations, but this is my favorite one. This is a Taiwan like crepe with ice cream and cilantro on the inside. I love the combination of ice cream, which is sweet, and cilantro, which is a little bit savory. And this is also a Taiwan bao, like a steamed bun with pork belly and yuzu. 
Okay, it is now 3.14 p.m. and the battery life has dropped down to 35%. Like I said, the battery life of the Flip 5 is just not going to be amazing. To be fair, it has been a very heavy usage day. I've been on this phone non-stop filming, vlogging, texting, and navigating too. Well, I just got this um, sago, red bean, coconut milk, with, um, Chinese grass jelly on ice for about three US dollars. Okay, it is 5.07 p.m. and we're at 21% battery, 20% battery. So I'm gonna have to charge the phone before I step out for the rest of the night. Okay, let's take a look at this new and improved screen, which Samsung is calling, I believe, the Flex Display or the Flex Screen. So obviously, it's awesome because it's a much bigger camera viewfinder now. But I also like that it allows you to run apps in full. So this fixes one of my biggest complaints of the previous couple of Z Flips because I felt like the outside screen didn't let me do enough. I still needed to unfold the phone every single time I want to send a message or do something like send an email with the phone. The Flip 5 fixes that finally because now if I want to respond to a WhatsApp message, I just tap into it and I actually have the full icon right here and I even have a keyboard. Now one bug that Samsung may fix down the line is if you open up a keyboard on the outside cover screen right now, it has to be the Samsung keyboard. Even though by default on my main screen, I am using Gboard. The other thing I want to highlight is that not all apps will run on the outside screen still. There's like a selection of apps that can do it. For example, Instagram, it's not possible to open on the outside. On Motorola's Razor, you can run Instagram on the outside if you want. So Motorola still gives you a little bit more freedom in terms of opening any app you want. But I think this is a pretty good list. I think it's pretty cool that you can actually open up Netflix and scroll through movies and even watch videos. Although it's a little bit gimmicky because if you can watch Netflix videos on the outside screen, you might as well open it up and watch it on the larger screen. So this outside cover screen is a huge, huge improvement and completely fixes my biggest gripe with the Z Flip series. Okay, it is pouring rain right now. Good thing this phone is rated IPX8 for water resistance so I don't have to worry. Okay, I am getting Hong Kong snacks. So this is a uh, siu mai and chung fun. It's like rice noodles. It's really good. And I also have a friend down here. <laughs> okay, so you're watching footage with the ultra-wide camera of the Flip 5. So my early thoughts on the Flip 5 is that I think this phone has two major appeals. The first appeal is that this is a very, very good vlogging phone because you have the outside screen that allows you to see yourself while filming yourself with the main camera you don't have to use the inferior selfie camera and yeah you can do this with other larger foldables like the fold 5 but the fold 5 it's a little bit you know bigger and heavier to hold this flip 5 is really light it's under 200 grams and it's very easy to hold because of how small it is so if you are like an aspiring vlogger you might as well invest in a flip 5 so you can film yourself as you go around town instead of like buying like a Sony ZV-E1 which costs like $2,000, you know? The second appeal is for people who take a lot of hands-free video calls or selfies or time-lapse videos. With the Flip 5, you can put the phone in flex mode and just film without needing to prop up the phone or hold it yourself. So overall, I think with Flip 5, just by virtue of having a larger screen, it's a major improvement. The only disappointment is battery life. This is not a phone that can last all day if you're a heavy user such as myself. But you know, as long as you carry a portable battery pack with you to charge up the phone when you need, then you know, I have no real complaints with the Flip 5. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I wish there was a zoom lens here, but then if you add a zoom lens, then the price will go up a little bit more. As it is now, I think the camera system is good enough. So uh, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.